The last time the US president and Japanese prime minister dined together, it was at a sushi restaurant in Tokyo. That's some good sushi right there. <laughs> this week's events in Washington will be far more formal. It's the first official visit by a Japanese prime minister since 2006, and Shinzo Abe will become the first Japanese leader to address a joint session of the US Congress. Behind the pomp and ceremony, this visit also seeks to strengthen the alliance. The two powers will update their defense guidelines for the first time in two decades. There will be deeper integration of their military forces when it comes to missile defense, surveillance and intelligence gathering. And joint initiatives on submarine cooperation, cyber and space are also set to be announced. Expect more support from Washington for Japan's controversial new security legislation, which seeks an expanded regional role for Japanese forces. The United States has a lot of expectations built up over decades. He will not be able to satisfy them, but any movement of any kind in the direction of a more advanced and more capable Japanese military presence internationally, a peaceful one, but nevertheless a military presence, that will be welcomed by the United States and the Obama administration. Much of the new relationship will be framed around the threat posed by the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. China thinks the new phase in the alliance could partly be aimed at Beijing, especially as the U.S. says its security guarantees with Japan extend to the Dwayu Islands, which the Japanese call Senkaku. On trade, Abe will push the U.S. Congress to give President Obama the ability to finalize the negotiations on the 12-nation Trans-Pacific Partnership Free Trade Area and allow a yes or no vote with no amendments. This so-called trade promotion authority is seen as key to getting a deal done. The free trade area would at least initially exclude China and many Southeast Asian nations. While the meetings will focus on the future, Japan's past will also play a role. This year marks the 70th anniversary of the end of the Second World War. Visits by Abe and his political allies to the controversial Yasukuni Shrine in Tokyo, which commemorates Japanese war dead, including more than a thousand war criminals, have rankled many nations including U.S. ally South Korea. And just days before Abe's arrival, this 87-year-old Korean woman shed tears here in Washington, recounting her time as a sex slave for the Japanese military. She still awaits an apology. I want Shinzo Abe to come forward with a good conscience and a legal official apology so that my life can be restored. Japan has its historical problems with the U.S. too. Seventy years ago, atom bombs were dropped by U.S. forces on Nagasaki and Hiroshima. But after the occupation, there was an alliance that lasted for the 20th century and now is being updated for the 21st. Nathan King, CCTV, Washington.